you're operating with such a large scale of creativity, does it get overwhelming at some point just to express everything that is in your mind? Yeah, that's why I have a hard time going to sleep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> When I do go to sleep, though, like um, everyone makes fun of me because like I'll stay up for like days and then <clears throat> when I do go to sleep like I'll, I can sleep like 18 hours <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you know nice. what I mean people are like is he still alive it's like yeah I'm breathing <laughs> I'm still there um, but I've had it uh, especially in the pandemic when I the rate I work at because I, I don't have many friends in my life um, just because I, I found most times it's very hard to um have this level of understanding with other people yeah um, which i don't expect people to be as insane as i am you know because i'm my own person like i go through my my own experiences and i have my own obsessions and whatever else um but i found a lot and even still to this day a lot of the time when i do fall asleep after a long session of drawing or world building or writing music um In my dreams, I'll, I'll be continuing what I was working on or working on something new. And especially the 3D renderings and world building and stuff. Like I've had dreams where I've fully rendered or 3D modeled a building or a city or whatever. Um, and then by the time I wake up, I realized I wasn't working. And that Whoa. was like a, that was a subconscious expression. Um, and then so once I wake up, there's this like sadness that overcomes me. And I'm like, damn, I didn't create what I thought I just created. So then I have to spend the whole day doing that, you know, and then it keeps happening. So it's just like on and on and on. <laughs> Wait, are you doing this yourself as well? Like literally the technical part of the rendering in the yeah. building? Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's impressive. I did a project in the pandemic called Endless. Um, I just wanted to prove the point that we've technology has gotten to a point where you don't need a production house of a hundred people, which you did like three, even, you know, five years ago, three years ago, you, in order to do what one person now can do, you needed a team of people. It yeah. was ridiculous. But now the rate at what technology is moving at, um, I kind of like, just to prove a point to myself, really, um, I didn't want to be reliant on people. And I find words are very loose sometimes mm -hmm. and it's easier to just be like, this is what it is rather than being like, I think it should be this way, you know? Um, so I, I threw an modeled this whole city and this idea. And then like the brief synapsis of it, uh, is like, uh, very similar to actually enter the void mm -hmm. where it's like after a soul, after a body has died, a soul has to progress from the life that they're in through to the next level of consciousness and so in this graphic novel you're like this form of light in a point of view perspective going through this like neoclassicalism uh ancient gothic city mm -hmm. church thing mm -hmm. um and you like float and you're flying through all these landscapes and the longer that you stay in the short film the more the buildings lose its form um wow. and then so like it's like 35 minutes 40 minutes maybe um And so it's it's up to you how long you want to stay in that that setting or if you want to keep it on loop, whatever. Um, and then I scored the whole, whole thing with a project I have called Alistair. It's like a classical soundtrack. Um, and it uses like different frequencies that agree with the soul, um, like 432. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, like that's like the frequency of the, the earth and the universe. Mm -hmm. um, and then I edited the whole thing and then... Uh, distributed it and created the merch and so every single aspect of it it was me yeah. that's absolutely impressive i must say you. and you know and i'm not trying to be nice i'm yeah. actually impressed with that because um it takes such a considerable amount of passion and creativity yeah. to do that yourself it's it's yeah i'm yeah. actually you know quite well admiring you about every I'm, i'm a renaissance soul yeah sure. yeah, yeah definitely because you know even When I was thinking about the conversation with you, um, obviously, you know, it's not about how many different influences you have in your music, in mm -hmm. your settings, in your videos, in the way you dress, in the way you express yourself, you know, everything. But you're just showcasing a whole, you know, another <laughs> dimension of yeah. that. So, well, we, we were having a conversation the other day um, with some really sweet people. And they were like, you know, what the course of your your um, career, like who do you hope to be like? And 
um, and Sebastian and Remington said bands and artists and stuff like that. And then I didn't even think of a, a band. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I admire people like Walt Disney and Howard Hughes and Alan Watts, um, Marcus Aurelius, you know, people like that. So if you use those as your guides of, um, uh, the course of life that you kind of want to accomplish, um, you know, things from like boutique hotels to, um, our clothing lines and graphic novels and stuff like that. You know, I just think it's all expression. And I think it's very important to want to leave behind something for if people in this generation identify with it, beautiful. If people in a hundred years identify with it, beautiful, you know, and, um, not to, to have a negative thought, but I think a lot of what's happening in today's generation won't stand the test of time because it is coming from a place of, I just want to be famous. Yeah. (laughs) Where it's like, that's cool that you want to be famous, but like, what is the depth of it? What is the meaning of it? Yeah. To me, and it shows throughout history, the things that are appreciated and romanticized are the things that come from artists that didn't have the intention of wanting to be famous. Absolutely. It came from the intention of, if I don't create this, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, absolutely. You know, I always, um, I always cite this as an example of what you said with Paul Gauguin, you mm-hmm. know, the painter mm-hmm. who, you know, you probably know, but you know, he left his well-established family and his job and mm-hmm. all of the money he had just because he needed to, paint Mm -hmm. you know and um you know this is a story that really led me to the conclusion of what you're referring to right now is that the purpose is to express yourself and to you know to feel the satisfaction of you know the showcasing to the world what you are Mm -hmm. as a person and unfortunately not that many people understand it that Mm -hmm. way and i think my brother and i's roles on this earth is to kind of be those vessels of ridiculous love for what we do to where like if we're able to inspire anyone one person to kind of see what we saw um you know that's like passing on the beauty of existence to later generations yeah you know speaking about all of that is there a certain you know aspect of art whether it's the music whether it's the drawing that you feel more connected with in terms of expressing yourself or it's all you know, valuable in different senses. I do have the joy of being able to switch mm-hmm. different ways of creation. Um, Cause like when I'm on tour, I would definitely wear myself out on music. And then like, I have three months off coming up and I'm going to wear myself out on art <laughs> and, then I'll, and then music as well. And then I'll come right back around. Um, but I think it all is kind of hand in hand in the fact that, um, if you're able to link all these different mediums, Mm -hmm. uh, it creates for a much bigger art project. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why this band to me has always been an art project Mm -hmm. because like, yes, we, we start with music, but it expands into so many different other elements and aspects of, Mm -hmm. of life. 